old version of Linux and just connecting it directly to the internet. I mean, what could go wrong? Today's ancient Linux shenanigans are brought to you by Squarespace. But more on that in a bit. Now, if you've been around here for a while, you probably know that I really enjoy installing obscure versions of Linux on really old computers. In fact, the third video I ever did on this channel was installing Yellow Dog Linux 2 on an iMac G3. Well, today we're venturing back into Yellow Dog Linux land in the most obscure way possible by using it as the third OS on a triple boot 20th anniversary Macintosh build. But can we really get Linux to play nicely with both the classic Mac OS and BOS on the weirdest Macintosh ever made? I have no idea, so stay tuned. And if you enjoy testing the absolute limits of security through obscurity, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. I have a weird feeling that this won't be the last weird operating system that we try to install on this TAM, so it's definitely worth sticking around. So I want to start off this video with a bit of an apology. You see, I was a bit harsh on the BOS installer when I couldn't get it to run properly on the TAM last time. I thought I was following the instructions properly, and well, I was following the printed instructions. It turns out that the BOS launcher was never upgraded to work with macOS 9 which was kindly pointed out both in the original thread and on the Macintosh Garden page for BOS PowerPC. I must have read it as requiring at least macOS 7 or 8, but instead it was more like only works with macOS 7 or 8. So when I redid my install of BOS using macOS 8.1, it happily installed from the original optical media. I'm sorry, horribly smushed retail box of VOS 4.5 that came in an unsecured padded envelope. And that also means that technically this TAM is already triple booting. On the SD card over IDE, we have a minimal install of macOS 8.1. And that's just there to launch into BOS, which requires booting into macOS first. Then on the SATA controller card on PCI, we have macOS 9. And the fourth OS, hopefully, is gonna be Linux. Ideally, we're gonna install Yellow Dog on a partition on the SSD on the SATA card. Though, I'm not above redoing that whole SD card again. To give this thing the best chance of working, especially with that SATA controller card, I'm gonna use the last version of Yellow Dog Linux that was released compatible with Old World Power Max, version five. Right after this quick word about today's sponsor, Squarespace. Create a fast, beautiful, and rich web experience for your business or brand using Squarespace's powerful all-in-one platform. It's really easy to get started. Like, say I wanted to build a website all about my love for really, really, really old Linuxes. Not only could I build it in minutes with Squarespace, but it would be well-designed, responsive, and mobile-friendly. There's a ton of beautiful templates that I could choose to start from. And from there, it's simple to build a great looking site that's also fast, responsive, and works great on any device. With Squarespace's extensive built-in tool set, I can also optimize for SEO, manage a mailing list, check my analytics, and much more. All geared towards managing your entire web presence. So check out squarespace.com slash action retro today for a free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use code ACTIONRETRO to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Okay, everything is connected and we have the Raskuzzy booted up and sitting on top of our kind of ridiculous tower of power here. Let's make sure the TAM still works and see if we can boot into Mac OS 9 on the SSD. There we go. Okay, good. G4 upgrade still works. But I haven't seen any blink blonk from the Raskuzzy. I think it would have tried to at least probe it. Okay, so for whatever reason, the TAM does not want to read the Yellow Dog Linux CD image from Raskuzzy here. So I tried burning it onto a CD and it works just fine. So unfortunately, it looks like we're going with a pile of burned plastic. I'm also doing this dual monitor setup here for kind of an interesting reason. 
you see the TAMS LCD is actually very limited. It only runs at 800 by 600. The only way this thing does 640 by 480 is in software. So if we boot into Linux and it's not booting at 800 by 600, well, we're not gonna see anything on the screen here, but with this kind of janky external monitor setup, this will display whatever resolution that Linux decides to throw at us. So with that, <laughs> let's try this out. Okay, so the way that this works is we need to install an extension called Boot X since this is an old world Macintosh. And then we just boot into the Mac OS, launch boot X, and that will boot us into the Linux partition with the added benefit of that should be able to pass through the G4 processor into Linux, which with BOS on here, we have the problem that it can't actually see that weird cache slot G4 upgrade. Okay, so YDL5, didn't seem to have boot X, so maybe it actually doesn't support old world Macs. So I made YDL 4.1. Let's try that one out. Yeah, I only see yeah boot on here as well. And there just isn't good information about what exact Macs Yellow Dog is compatible for with each version. So yeah, I guess let's try Yellow Dog 3. All right, let's try 301. Aha, there it is, boot X. So I guess 301 is technically the last version that works with old world Power Max. Okay, so Stuff It 4 did the trick and we now have a boot X folder. Now going from the official Yellow Dog instructions, we have to install these two in their respective places. So the boot X app, goes into control panels and the boot X extension of course goes into extensions. Now let's take a look at extensions manager, make sure it's there. Yep. Boot X app is enabled. Now we'll put in disc one of yellow dog three. And then within the images folder here, we go Ram disc image right to the system folder. Okay, I think we need the VM Linux file here in system folder as well. Let's try that. Okay, so I renamed that file to just VM Linux and now guess what? Works just fine. Okay, so we need to tell it to boot from the RAM disk, which it found, so that's good. For SCSI on, I'm not sure if we should do that or not. <laughs> Let's find out and YOLO this thing into Linux. Okay, I've moved the camera back so we can see both screens in case there are any resolution shenanigans. And uh, yeah, Linux. Ooh, pretty. <laughs> yes, welcome to Linux kernel 2.4. <laughs> I do believe it may have immediately crashed. All right, trying the other VM Linux. Once again, seems to have crashed. All right, well, it may have had something to do with the G4 upgrade card because I restarted it and before the upgrade card driver loaded, I chose Linux and wouldn't you know, here it is. And also good thing that we booted with this monitor attached because as you can see, there is nothing on the internal TAM display. This must be 640 by 480 and this can only display 800 by 600. But we're doing it. <laughs> and as I said that, it froze. Okay, well, once again, I'm dumb. It is not frozen. It's just the key map is wrong and I button mashed the keyboard and actually got to the next step here. I should probably restart and choose a different key map. Okay, so I've reinstalled the USB controller card and I have pulled out my finest cheap plastic HP USB keyboard and have <laughs> it connected to the TAM. 
which should probably be illegal. Let's see if that solves our problem. Oh my God, it works. <laughs> I'm going to jail for this. English, US, local CD-ROM. What gives? The same thing. What madness is this? All right, well, the TAM does not seem to like Yellow Dog Linux. So let's try the friendliest Linux of 2000, Linux PPC 2000. So I've never actually used Linux PPC before, but look, the CD has a nice tux icon. That's pretty fun. But I'm pretty sure this is just very similar to Yellow Dog Linux. I mean, it's even built on Red Hat or CentOS in the case of Yellow Dog Linux, which is basically Red Hat. But Linux PPC, its claim to fame was being very easy to install with this Mac OS style installer. So we're just gonna run through it and see what happens. Installation was successful. Uh, where, okay. <laughs> I guess it just installed the bootloader part, not Linux itself because I didn't select a partition. All right, uh, it has boot X with uh, some kernel arguments in there. Just the RAM disk size. So I guess we're going into the installer. Let's see if we need the external screen. No, hey, look at that. Internal screen, resolution is correct. Version 274 booting, the installer is here. All right, this is looking promising. Welcome to the PowerPC reference release. Whatever that means. All right, we have the Mac <laughs> keyboard options here. Thank goodness. Install from local CD-ROM. Let's see if it can find the CD-ROM. Uh-oh. <laughs> Segmentation fault, huh? And we're back at the start. Uh-oh. It's not happy. <laughs> Let's try this with a SCSI CD-ROM drive. All right, I've got our old school Apple SCSI CD-ROM connected now. Let's see if this works. All right, I saw that it detected the SCSI CD-ROM drive, so that's good. Aha, the new 2000 format, the future. Hey, look at this. We have a, a mouse. Oh my God, it's a graphical installer. <laughs> it's running Linux. It's running X. Oh man, okay, I'm very excited now. <laughs> the X Linux installer. I wasn't expecting this at all. <laughs> okay, I have an HFS partition that I wanna to install to. I don't know if I have to format that. No, I don't have any Linux partitions defined yet. Okay, partition drives. Uh, well, I think it only sees the IDE. I don't think it sees the SATA controller card. Okay, it is several hours later and uh, yeah, I thought it would be fun to try to install everything onto a mSATA drive connected to an adapter on IDE. And uh, yeah, turns out the TAM didn't like any of these. So I went back to the CF card. I reinstalled Mac OS, BOS, and left two partitions for Linux, a main partition and a swap partition. So let's give this another try installing to IDE. 
All right, so I've got my BOS launcher here. Put that right on the desktop. And now let's install Linux PPC. Oh, good. It failed. All right, well, third reboot's the charm, I guess. We are now booted back into the installer. And it's just as cool as I remembered. <laughs> All right, the 8 gig here is Mac OS 8. The 20 gig here is BOS. This 31 gig here is going to be our Linux partition. And this 256 meg partition at the end is going to be swap. So hopefully I can do that from here. Yeah, look at that. Apple Unix SVR2 Linux PPC. Nice. This just kind of scrolls through them. Uh, how do I apply? Destructive save. <laughs> do it. Oh, I have to reboot. Son of a gun. All right. All right, first prompt is the BOS prompt, choose Mac OS. Second prompt is the Linux or Mac prompt, choose Linux. And that's just gonna be the process for selecting operating system. Not quite as nice as GNU Grub, but it'll do. All right, let's try this now. Select partitions. Oh, we've got it. So I guess, uh, huh? Oh man, it is going slow, but I've got choose packages starting to open up, so that's promising. All right, time to choose packages. Ah, okay. <laughs> I have to highlight everything. Hey, sweet, I can get Python on here. That's pretty nice. Don't need printers, but I do want games. And install. Oh, it's working. I have a feeling this is gonna take forever. All right, after quite a long time, the packages have completed and I can set a root password. What, do you not like that password? Is that it? Are we installed? Okay, I think we're done. Let's find out. All right, booting without the install CD. Start Mac OS. Boot Linux. <laughs> and I have no idea if this is gonna work. Nope, it's trying to boot the installer. All right, let's try this. One more time. Don't use a RAM disk. The root device is uh, HDA3. Save to prefs. I don't think we need this actually. Save and boot. Come on, Linux. Okay, I know Linux is on here. It just, I can't find it. <laughs> okay, well, Linux is really fighting us here on this TAM. Why you do this to me? But I'm gonna call this episode here now when we're right at the cusp of success installing four operating systems on here. Mac OS 9, 8.1, Linux, BOS. And we're gonna pick this up again in the very near future because well, there's still one OS that we have to install on here that everyone has been asking for. And there's a reason why we've saved it for last. So make sure you subscribe to the channel. We're gonna make this thing boot all of the operating systems. But if you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more Linuxy tan 90s weird Macintosh shenanigans like this, please subscribe down below. And thank you very much for watching. And a special thanks to Camilla Noseda, Chris Allegretta, Chris Biggs, Chris Calderon, Chris Nelson, Cobalt Retrotech, Control Alt Reese, Daniel Hubbard, 
Dwight A. Spencer, Greg from Rut K Mods, Paul Spencer, Ryan, Scott Thompson, and Sutek, who are my highest tiered patrons and all of my Patreon supporters for helping to make these videos possible.